uh, how can you augment the IT staff to do a better job or more cost-effective job managing and keeping the lights on and doing new projects? We're shifting all of our, our energy as not being, hey, what are you doing to expand or to replace things? We're saying, how can we save you money by using what you have in order to get through this uh, challenging time that we have overall? Thank you for joining this episode of the Elephant in Your Hospital podcast with Futura Healthcare. Jason Ashworth, Director of Healthcare Technology at Futura. And today I'm joined by industry healthcare leaders Tom Pasick and Ken Levitan, along with Futura CEO David Julian. Now, in today's discussion, we'll discuss the hidden cost savings within your IT department. So, there are a variety of avenues to explore when we talk about these hidden cost savings within a department. So, Tom Pasick, you're up. When I say that, what does that conversation look like from your vantage point? Uh, I guess talking to my peers right now, honestly, uh, the things that are, um, I would call low hanging fruit, um, are, are really an evaluation of your contracts and what application your inventory, so to speak of, especially of software and of tools. Um, hospitals have acquired many, many solutions over the years. Um, some from uh, multiple uh, applications from one vendor and you know best of breed products uh, from other vendors as well. And over time you start to you start to realize that you have maybe applications that do the same thing. You know a department may have went out and evaluated a product and brought it in unbeknownst to you. And it all depends on you know your your IT's, uh, and your contract management capabilities within your organization and how well you do that. A um, lot of, lot of, like I said, a lot of different uh, opportunities to reduce the number of applications you have in an organization, consolidate. Uh, one, one way to do that is to evaluate your biggest partners and who you're buying multiple products from and do they offer something else that you might be able to add to that portfolio that you maybe are getting from a, a best of breed vendor, um, standalone product that's costing you more money, uh, you're paying extra for integration, those types of things that are ways to maybe mitigate those costs, not have to pay for the integration because it's maybe already built into the suite of products that you have from another vendor. Um, dealing with less vendors right off the bat <laughs> gives you more time in your day and makes you more efficient. Um, but those are some of the things, and I know I've talked to my uh, counterparts in the industry everybody's looking internally. What do we do internally to decrease costs in our organizations? And one of the things they turn to is inventory. And it's surprisingly um, a big issue in, in, in healthcare IT is that we have lots of contracts and not great contract management systems and not create a great handle oh. on our inventory. So those are things that, you know, kind of what I would call low hanging fruit, but a lot of people are focused on right now. Ken. Tom, I'm just I'm just curious. I, I I worked at a couple of organizations, and what you talked about is um, in that uh, we used to describe it as the why not Epic uh, or the why not Cerner uh, uh, solution uh, uh, process. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you've seen as a CIO in managing that, um, in trying to get people to 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 go with what might not necessarily be best of breed, but 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 might be best of cost uh, as you, as you go forward. So Ken, that that conversation was really difficult in the past because of that <laughs> that issue. We didn't have the cost constraints that we have today in healthcare. Um, right. You know, and people wanted the best of breed. They would come up with one feature functionality that maybe can't couldn't be done by a Cerner or an Epic or EMR provider. And so, and they would, you know, they would really lobby for that and try to validate um, their just justify why that is so important to them. And when money was a little more available, that you you know you might you might listen to that a little more. But today, when everybody's really trying to tighten the belts and find every dollar they can, uh, maybe that's just not you can't afford to have those little extra feature functionalities that maybe are just nice to haves but really don't add to the total value or the bottom line of the organization or even quality or safety of patient care. Uh, it's a convenience factor maybe for a department for their workflow or something like that. Um, so I would say that that conversation is a lot easier to have right now, Ken, to answer your question than it so was. So I'll, 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 
<laughs> One of my great philosophies in life is always take advantage of a crisis, right? Um, exactly. There's nothing else yeah. that, that can that, that can drive that. Hey, Tom, you know, you, Tom, you think about the the application charges and the fees and the licensing and overlapping disparate systems. It's it's got to be a huge challenge right now with the labor associated with the talent associated with supporting that. So if they can reduce some of these applications and have more domain expertise on the the core products, I'm, I'm sure there's a a great area for cost savings to an organization. Absolutely, David. Yeah, I mean, that goes to, you know, how many people do you need to have to know all the different product lines? Um, again, Ken made, Ken made the great comment, you know, it's uh, Epic first, Cerner first, Meditech first, whatever your EMR vendor is, and you try to get as much as you can from those solutions because individuals understand how those systems work and can flow. So you could have a lab person do radiology and lab support. And when you're so, um, when you're um, expressing best of breed systems, you tend to have a lab specialist who really can't talk to radiology talk or understand the workflows for radiology. Whereas when you're across the EMR and it's, you can, you can have that capability. Today, we also look for, you know, as, as you know, and it's, outsourcing and, and resource enhancement for the IT shops. Nobody's out there trying to hire a bunch of IT people these days. We are an expense department. Um, and I think Ken, I've heard Ken in a previous conversation say, you know, IT departments, nobody wants to really cut their IT shop because even though we are an expense department, they realize the value of the IT shop. But a lot of times, uh, you know, we're doing big projects. Let's, let's face it, we're doing big, big projects. It comes in waves. So, you don't necessarily have to bring in an FTE. We can go to a consulting company, outsource services to help us with uh, certain projects and get us over to hump and, and get some of that workload done um, more effectively and cost effectively by by turning to some outside resources and expertise. We see um, we've been seeing in our business right now um, overall that people are tending to do more outsource service contracts in order to support or sustainability on, I'll call it more legacy or older technology versus trying to replace it. And I think, do you guys think that's going to continue here in the short term to um, people to outsource that type of, you know, whether it's mobility, whether it's any technology, whether it's network management, uh, if we don't need to bring upgrade and replace it, we can stretch that technology a little longer and put some services around it. Uh, we're just seeing more opportunity there. I, I don't know if you're you're seeing the same thing across the board. So, so David, I'll, I'll say that absolutely, and, and certainly within the IT world, but also other worlds where where can you utilize and get the best use of resources, uh, and and if you can get somebody else to do it for you in a more effective, efficient way, and and, and you don't, and you can spend your dollars in, in other places. Um, I, I'd like to take a half a step back, and, and Tom, you, you, you talked about IT being an expense department, and, and it certainly is, right? It, it, it's, uh, its expenses are rising faster than almost any other area with a healthcare organization these days that outpaces inflation pretty significantly. Um, but I also think that the, the attitude of the C-suite and the organizations have changed around IT in recognizing that every one of the performance improvement or operational improvement initiatives they have are, are, are all have an IT component and have a resource need there. And therefore utilizing and spending your resources and getting the right expertise uh, in the right way to use the IT assets that you might have or the new IT assets that you might need um, is critical. And um, sourcing is a way to be able to ensure that you're getting those 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 resources, it, it it's always a consideration. It's not a simple answer, but 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 certainly looking at that uh, uh, ways to do it. Um, I will say that as a uh, chief operating officer, as a CEO, I would always want to make sure that our IT department for the keep the lights on stuff was doing all of those things as absolutely efficiently and cheaply as they could and i would put all kinds of pressure on it at the same time as an organization we were making significant investments in it to be able to improve our clinical care uh, be more customer friendly 
do a whole variety of other things that were going so that the overall budget in IP might be going up. But, but you'd want to make sure that uh, that kind of underlying te- uh, um, uh, set of technologies was being delivered in the most effective way. So I, w- I want to blend the, the conversations we're, that we're having because it, it all makes sense uh, and really kind of illustrates the conundrum. But we understand the investment in technology and IT is an expense uh, department. We understand how that affects uh, quality of care. But then, David, you're mentioning legacy support, and we've got to be cost effective and we've got to be efficient. So how do you what's the struggle in your positions to draw that line to kind of understand where that balance is in kind of stretching out and being cost effective and efficient versus investing in that that new technology, given how it affects patient care? I mean, that does not seem like an easy decision to make. Those are very challenging decisions for sure, Jason. And I would say, you know, both David and Ken brought up good points about uh, how can you augment the IT staff to do a better job or more cost effective job managing and keeping the lights on and doing new projects, you know? And I think every organization's different in how they approach that. Um, I like to keep my staff um, engaged if they're, they're in a very engaged staff. Some of my staff has been. You know, they're they're the top performers. They're the guys that want you want doing your big project work, your new, um, you know, your new buildings and things like that. And yet, you got to keep the lights on. You know, that's the day to day things. There are certain individuals that are just built to do day to day 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 to day work, but um, that's stuff that I think you could easily get somebody hire somebody outside to do that for very cost effectively to, to do to keep the lights on maybe even provide your help desk for that matter. Um, and then, um, you know, and then, you know, use your staff in a more effective way, engaged way to do new projects, learn new new things in, in, that are coming down the pipe in your organization. And then there's others that aren't like that. I mean, there's smaller departments that just can't afford to do that. So they bring in the outside resources to help with the project work while their small staffs can continue to keep the lights on and do a real good job of, of maintaining what you currently have in your organization. So it goes both ways. It really depends on your specific organization, your staffing and uh, you know, the quality of your staff and the uh, um, size of your staff, quite frankly, for that matter, as to how, how which approach you take. But both are valid. Both are valid. There's all yeah. IT departments. I don't know any IT department that does it all. They're always looking for some help outside, um, you know, um, to, to keep the lights on or to move projects forward, optimize the EMR, those types of things. Jason, you asked the, 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 the hard question, right? How do you make the capital contention question, uh, that decisions? How do you, how you decide where you're going to invest, where you're going to spend your, spend your dollars? And, and every, as, as Tom said, I think every organization does it a little, a little differently, but it's usually based on a set of criteria that says what's going to help move the organization most forward, what might have the, the best return on investment, what, what, uh, what's going to uh, improve quality and safety. Um, uh, and then there are some of the must, you know, kind of the have tos. What are the things that are just regulatory required to do it, spend on these things? So it, it's, you kind of throw all that stuff together and you, you know, you know you're gonna have a five pound bag and, a, and 10 pounds of stuff. Uh, and you're going to figure out how to try to get that uh, in there in the best way you can as you as you work your way through it. But it's, it's David, uh, no simple task. Do you do you David, have a question um, for you? Do you have, do you have people quick. in your Do you have people on your team um, that are trying to identify these opportunities for cost reduction? Is it? I know it, it filters up to the decision makers like you and Ken and Tom in the past, but. Do you have a, a, a department lead or head departments in the IT staff that are helping you identify these opportunities for effectiveness and efficiencies? Well, I'll say, and I'll, and I'll go first, Tom. I, I think it, it, it depends on the organization. Um, one, uh, I think there's a significant, uh, you, you rely on your, your, your leaders, um, whether that's within IT or other areas to identify some of those opportunities. In some organizations, you have a combination of a performance improvement team that often is very tightly involved, aligned with IT. 
um, to say where are some potential opportunities for us to do things related to throughput or um, uh, reduction in um, uh, 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 length of stay or a variety of other uh, 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 components or, um, uh, you know, good examples are, are in the patient access area about where if we can make so something more uh, customer friendly and efficient, uh, you can get greater volume through in your institution and things like that. So there's an expectation that, that people are out there looking, uh, that they're talking to smart people in the uh, commercial community like you guys that see good ideas or going to conferences and reading to, to try to find those things to bring them forward. Yeah, and, and David, that's the question I wanted to kind of elaborate a little bit on. Here we are, you're hearing former CIOs, COOs, CEOs, experienced in that space talking about some of the challenges associated with technology. You have a company that not only helps assist those organizations with procuring that technology, you've got uh, your company built on a backbone of support, you've got advisory services in place to help them on a project-based need or augmenting that staff uh, or those resources. So how is a company like Futura and others helping hospitals in, in this very department that we're talking about? Yeah, so we've shifted a lot of our go-to-market strategy right now, but from innovation, because we're we're trying to say right now with the challenging times that the organizations have, how can we put in services, sustainability, augment um, the staffs that they have internally, and where can we find ROIs that are very short-term oriented to them, productivity improvement, length of stay, we heard about that, um, you know, trying to go ahead and work with organizations to talk about should they be moving things more to the cloud? What do they have in their data center? We're shifting all of our, our energy as not being, hey, what are you doing to expand or to replace things? We're saying, how can we save you money by using what you have in order to get through this uh, challenging time that we have overall? Very interesting. Closing, uh, again, we're always coming up on time here. It's always good conversation. Any Anything we missed here, guys? Any closing remarks? Uh, when it comes to this big topic of hidden of hidden cost, Mr. Pasek, any final words from you? No, I would just you know, I'll add one thing, and David just touched on it. Is you know that's another big uh, avenue right now is cloud. It's always been a debate: do you move to the cloud or not move to the cloud? Is it cost effective to move to the cloud? And I think there's a lot of effort and strategies being going on right now, and organizations looking for outside help to help them with that strategy. Do we move to the cloud? Don't we move to the cloud? Some of that is a capital and an operating uh, decision and for an organization. Um, but that is certainly a big topic that we really didn't scratch the surface on here, but it's a big topic out there right now with CIOs and, York and uh, healthcare organizations. It's, it's actually yeah. a topic I've spent the last, uh, just being at HIMSS recently, spent a a good part of that that week talking about just that and it's coming and we know it's coming and organizations know it's coming how we handle it will be interesting uh ken any final thoughts from you i, I no i i think uh uh in addition to that the other conversation that is that that is um uh related to ongoing investment and things that keep um the c-suite awake at night is related to cybersecurity and having the right plan and tools in, in in place on that side of the world uh, because as an enterprise risk at least in every uh, process i've ever gone through uh cyber in the last five or six years has been either number you know number one or number two in the in the risk issue for for most of the institutions that i work with so what you guys saying is we have future episodes to come on converting <laughs> exactly. to the cloud and cybersecurity. Am I hearing that correctly? Indeed. <laughs> sounds sounds right, well, like Thank it. you, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys joining. Thanks, everybody, for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to listen to future episodes of the Elephant in Your Hospital podcast or visit our website at futureworks.com backslash podcast.